Hello and welcome back st statisticians. We're on to our next lesson which is variables and types of data. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to identify data types and the measurement level and categorizing your variables and that kind of thing. So let's get going. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what are qualitative variables. You ever meet somebody that has that special quality? Well, that's what they're talking about, qualitative with an L. It is a variable that can be placed into distinct categories according to some characteristic or attribute. So, you know, for example, uh, a quality someone has might be eye color, it might be gender, or it might be hair color something like that. And four examples of qualitative variables are gender, which I mentioned, religious preference, because you're Baptist, and or you might be Catholic, or you might be Jewish, and so on. Geographic location, where are you living? Ethnicity, if you're of Spanish descent or something like that. So those are some examples of qualitative variables. Quantitative, First part is quantity, quantity. So when you see the N, think numbers. So they're numerical value, variables that can be ranked or order. So there's qualitative, that's quality. Quantitative, quantity. Quality over quantity, you know, have you ever heard that saying? But anyway, uh, so they're numerical. So two types of quantitative. You could have discrete, which are countable. So one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth, the counting numbers. You could have continuous which are when you have to round, you're measuring something. It says can assume an infinite number of values between two given values. So what they mean by that is like you could have 1.1, 1.11, 1.1132, 4, you know, and so on and so forth. So they're often obtained by measuring and they include fractions and decimals. So discretes are whole numbers and the uh, continuous have fractions or decimals in them. So that's the difference between continuous and discrete. From the definition, continuous variables can be fractions or decimals. Discrete variables can't. Let's do some examples. So three examples of discrete variables are the number of children in your family, the number of students in a class, number of calls received by a help desk technician, and so you can look at those and say, well, those are countable. They're counting something up and they're all whole numbers. Three examples of continuous variables are temperature, because you could have 96.8 degrees, which I believe, or is it 98.6? Yeah, I think it's 98.6. You know, something that's always puzzled me is if your body temperature has to maintain a temperature of 98.6, how come you are hot? when it is 98 degrees outside. Why doesn't it just feel comfortable? So maybe one of you science people can finally answer that dilemma for me because it seems like, okay, you're a mammal, you have to keep the 98.6 thing going on, but how come is it we sweat like crazy when it's 98 degrees outside? That should feel comfortable. Anyway, your height could also be an example of continuous variables. You know, I'm five six and a half, but when I look at how much I'm supposed to weigh, I round to five seven. Time it takes to run a 50-yard dash, because you've got tenths and hundredths of seconds, especially in the Olympics and that kind of thing. So here's a flow chart that can summarize your classification of variables. You start out with your data, which is just the collection of your samples. The data can either be qualitative or quantitative. Qualitative, like I said, it's some type of quality. Quantitative, those are numbers, and those numbers can be categorized into two different places. They can be discrete or continuous. Discrete are the whole numbers, continuous are the decimals and fractions. All right, why must answers be rounded when dealing with continuous data? That's a good question. If you're measuring something, you'll notice uh, uh, it goes between two of the tick marks and you always have to measure to the nearest inch, to the nearest tenth inch, to the nearest sixteenth inch, and so on. So it's limited by your measuring device, your ruler, your stopwatch, that kind of thing, the, the thermometer, and so on. The boundaries, so they give a range of values, and the boundaries 
are determined by putting another decimal to the right and go a half step down from the value and a half step up from the value. That's how I would explain it. Thus, the boundaries always end with a five. So I basically say you go down a half step and up a half step from where you started. So if a boundary is given to be between 72.5 and 73.5, it means from 72 and a half inches up to but not including 73.5. That's what they mean by the boundaries. Now let's form some boundaries just to see what this is. If you notice right here, it says 21. Down a half a step is 20.5. Because you add a decimal place, that's the 0.5, and then you go up a half a step. So you go down a half a step, which is 20.5, and then up a half a step, you add 0.5 to that 21 centimeters. 34, you go down a half a step. Down a half a step is going to be 33 and a half, so 33.5. Up a half a step is 34.5. 17.2, so we're going to add a decimal place after the 2. So we're going to have 17.15 to 17.25. Always ends in 5, and this guy's got to be right in the middle. The way I look at it is the 21 has to be right in the middle of these two. 34 has to be right in the middle of those two. It's always right in the middle. 17.2 would be right in the middle of those two. I'm hoping this makes sense. 0.512, well, we're going to add another decimal place, so it'll be 5.5115 and 0.5125. So down a half a step, up a half a step. The next one, see if you can do it. Okay, 2.85 to 2.95, is that what you got? I hope so. And the last one, 71.23, see if you can do that one. I'll give you five seconds. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Here you go. 71.225. Did you get that? And 71.235. So they're very easy, and it's just kind of an intuitive thing. I hope you're able to figure that out. But if not, bring your questions to me tomorrow. What are measurement scales? This is a type of classification that tells how variables are categorized, counted, or measured. And these words you probably haven't heard before. Nominal, there's four common types. Nominal, which classifies into mutually exclusive, exhausting categories. It sounds tiring, doesn't it? There's no order or ranking imposed on the data. Ordinal puts the data into rankable categories. And I know rankable is not a word, but it's shorter than write, writing all what they put in the book. But precise differences between the ranks doesn't exist. Interval data, ranks data, and precise differences do exist. No meaningful zero. And then ratio, it's the same as interval, the same thing. Ranks data and precise differences do exist, but there is a meaningful true zero. So when you were talking about interval, these are kind of uh, weird to see. So we're going to just go ahead and uh, when we get to the examples of the data, I think you'll see it a little bit easier. There was a term in that nominal definition that says mutually exclusive. You may have seen this word before, but it means two things that cannot occur at the same time. So for example, you can't sneeze and keep your eyes open. I don't care what anybody says. I don't know if your eyeballs would pop out. However, I do know that I don't think anybody can do that. So sneezing with your eyes open or sneezing and keeping your eyes open, those would be two mutually exclusive events. Your gender. I know what people say nowadays, but really you cannot be male and female at the same time. You were born one or the other. Okay, some of you science people are going to talk, bring in hermaphrodites and all that kind of stuff. But let's, you know, for the, that choice is made when you're born. That's a rare, rare exception. And zip code. Unless you're really, really, really fat, you can't live in two different zip codes. And so far, I don't know anybody who lives in two different zip codes. Uh, it might be possible, but let's just assume it's not. Okay, exhausting. You might be used to, like, the exhaust in your car or being tired, but what this means is leaves nothing out. It covers all possibilities. So if they say, I did an exhaustive search for that purse that I wanted, that means they looked everywhere. So they exhausted all possibilities. They covered all possibilities. Okay, some examples of mutual exclusivity. Gender, you're either male or female. 
and marital status you're single married divorced or widow one of those so you can't be single and married at the own at the same time even though a lot of people who are on personal ads and on eHarmony and on match.com claim that they're single but really they're married they can't be both at the same time okay so each type of data now hopefully this will help you with knowing the difference between the types of data once you see actual examples so nominal level data if you remember that's things like zip code gender eye color religion and nationality they're mutually exclusive type things can't be both at the same time ordinal level are like grades a b c d f there's no real zero judging first place second place third place and so on eye color oh that shouldn't have been eye color oh man okay ordinal level I gotta go back in there and take another look at that because it shouldn't be those it should be a rating scale and a ranking of tennis players so grade judging rating scale ranking of tennis players sorry first time through it there's bound to be some glitches but these last three on here do not copy those onto your notes those are an error you can tell I copied from column to column I know I take shortcuts interval level like your SAT scores your IQ temperature ACT score and EOC score so those are interval level devil interval level data and you might say well there is a real zero at, at temperature yes but temperature measures the lack of heat or the amount of heat and if you have there's no such thing as not having any heat all right ratio level de data is your height your weight your the time it takes to do something your salary and your age so those give you a kind of an example of each of those the only ones we messed up on were eye color religion nationality that cannot be an ordinal so hopefully you left those blank and I think that pretty much does it for today and uh, anyway I will definitely see you tomorrow I hope you got these down if not well maybe an advisory thanks a lot we'll see you next time